Okay, so we have a question here and it says the frequency distribution of the heights of 50 students correct to the nearest centimeter is given below. Now this is frequency polygon in regards to ungrouped data. So we're given a distribution table and we're asked to construct a frequency polygon. Now for this frequency polygon, we're going to use a scale of one centimeter to represent one unit on the y-axis and the two centimeter to represent one unit on the x-axis. Now, we're going to be doing a break in the graph on the x-axis so we have an accurate representation because we can't actually go all the way from zero to 150. So there has to be a break in the graph. So first things first, let's construct our axes. All right, so that is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. Now for the x-axis, we can actually represent here. This is where we will put the break in our graph. Okay, so this is zero and this is on the y-axis. So y-axis and this is our x-axis. Now on the y-axis, we have the frequency. Now frequency starts at one all the way up to 60. And always remember to label your axes. So frequency. Now on the x-axis, we're going to start at 149. And remember each two centimeter is going to represent one unit. Okay, so we have our representation on both axes. Now what's next is to plot the points. So the first point in the table would be frequency of one, height of 150 centimeters. So we locate the height, which is on the x-axis. So height in centimeters, and that is on the x-axis. Now, the frequency of one would go with 150. Now, once we have constructed all our points, we would need to connect the points. So let's go ahead and connect. So to close off on both ends, it would be the point before or after the initial and the end point. So the starting point is 150. So the point before that would be 149. And that is where we would start or close off our frequency polygon. And the next point here would be 157. And that is where we would close off on this end. Now, after we have constructed our frequency polygon, the next step would be to, from each point represented on our graph, so these are our points on the graph, we would need to draw broken lines connecting to the x-axis. So use your ruler and draw broken lines connecting to the x-axis from each point. Okay, so once we have our connections, we can now go ahead and calculate the area. So we have completed part A of this question to which it asks us to construct the frequency polygon. Now the next part is to determine the area. Now that is where the broken lines come into play. Now if it asked us where the frequency polygon by itself, we would not use the broken lines. However, because it asked us for area, we would have to use the broken lines to separate the different sections. So this would represent area one, area two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we have eight areas here. And a point to note is that the area will always be one more or the different areas would always be one more than the total number of um, frequencies in our table. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different frequencies. So we have eight areas. Now to calculate the area, we need to look at the shape of each section. So area one falls under a triangle. Now area one would be equal to half base times height. Now, if we look at this triangle here, 
the base is from 149 to 150, so that's just one unit. So it's half one, and the height is from zero to one, one. So that's just a half. Area two is a trapezium, and the formula for trapezium is half a plus b, and a plus b will represent the parallel sides, so half the sum of the parallel sides times height. Now the parallel sides are sides running vertically here. So this would be one parallel side, and it would be parallel to this one. So we look at side one, which is from zero to one. Side two is from zero to five. So that's one, so half, one plus five. And the height is from 151, 150 to 151, so that's just one. Even though it's, it occupies two centimeter, we're looking at the, the scale in which we have. So it's from 150 to 151, so that's just one unit. So it's times one, so that's half of six, three times one is three. So area three now, so the same concept applies, half the sum of parallel sides times height. So area three would be five plus 10, that's 15. So half of 15 is 7.5 times one, so 7.5. All right, so now we have all our areas, we can go ahead and total the areas. So if we have half, which is the same as 0 0.5 here, so 0 0.5 plus 7.5, that's eight. Eight plus three is 11. 11 plus 13, 24. 24 plus 13, 37. 37 plus eight, 45. 45 plus four, 49. And 49 plus one, so total area is equal to 50. So our area is 50, and that is the calculation in which we would use to calculate the area enclosed by the frequency polygon and the horizontal axis. Now, a thing to note is that the area will always equal to the total frequency. So if we should add up all the frequencies here, which would be the same as the 50 students, we would get 50. So that is one way to check if your area is accurate. It is to add all the frequencies and compare it with the total area enclosed by the frequency polygon and the x-axis to see if you would get it correct. Now, the last part of this question is asking us to calculate the probability that a student chosen at random, so this is part B and part C over here. A student chosen at random is 153 centimeters or 154 centimeters. So if you look on the table, 153 centimeters would have a frequency of 16. So that's 16 over 50 plus 154 would have a frequency of 10, 10 over 50, because we have 50 students in total, and that's 26 over 50, which is the same as 13 over 25. So we would occasionally leave our probability in a fraction at this level of math. So that would be part C to this question, and that is how you go ahead and construct your frequency polygon calculate the area enclosed by the frequency polygon and the x-axis, and calculate any question that relates to the frequency polygon. So I hope this video taught you something about frequency polygons and how to do it when we have ungrouped data. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one.